Almost three years ago, I left a long career in banking and finance and became president and CEO of Haven for Hope, which is a facility in San Antonio, 22 acres, 260 employees, 185 nonprofit agencies that provide services there that serve those who have lost their home. And by going there in that role, I have come face to face with homelessness like never before. And in a few minutes here, I can perhaps have to do the same with you. As I was going to Haven for Hope, a longtime friend whom I respect very much said to me, Kenny, you're going there, it's good work, but you need to understand one thing. Those people don't want help. It stunned me, first of all, for a good friend to call someone those people to relegate them to uh, a sect of people that was different from others. And then to say that they don't want help, it made me wonder. Just this week, one of our leaders at Haven for Hope was speaking to a group like this. And he asked the question of the audience, what do you think about when you think of the homeless? There were many answers. They need a job, they need help. One person said, I think they're trash. He was stunned. What that person didn't know was that the person that was speaking, the leader from Haven, had himself once been homeless. When I first came to Haven, uh, I had someone reach out to me and said, I need to talk to you. His name is Joe. He's a police officer, and he said, I need to tell you what I've learned about homelessness. We got together, and he said that he began to work in the police department with the homeless. He said, I had never done anything like that. I had to learn what it was about. And the way he did that, he began to tell me, was doing what he had done in his career for more than 20 years. You see, he was an undercover detective. He said for the first day and the first night, he didn't do anything, didn't say anything, just walked around, listened, watched. And then he began to ask questions. He would say to someone, where can I get some alcohol? Where can I get some uh, drugs? Where can I get a prostitute? And he said, that experience changed his life. And I said, what do you mean it changed your life? He said, I asked all those questions over and over and over, and every time the person said to me, get away from me, I'm getting help here, don't get in my way, these people at Haven for Hope are helping me, and you're going to stand in the way. He said, it changed my life. And I said, how did it change your life? With tears coming down his cheeks, a hardened, undercover police detective, he said, because all my career and perhaps all my life, I had seen those that are homeless as people with no desire, no energy, uh, no goals, just bums was the word that he used. He said, I learned in those four days that there are people that have lost their home that want help and seek help and can get it. It changed his life. As I began my career at Haven, I began, I kind of came face to face, as I said, with the homeless, and I had to learn what this was about. I'd been there just a few days when I got a, a letter, a handwritten front and back, single-spaced letter, letter to the CEO of Haven for Hope from someone living in one of our dormitories. It was a complaint letter. And it went on and on about, they pick on me. The staff picks on me constantly. They won't let me do this. They won't let me eat my potato chips. They pick on me. Throughout front and back, the words they pick on me were just everywhere. I did something that hadn't been done before at Haven for Hope. I called the, the woman who is a therapist who is in charge of residential, and I said, did you get this letter? And she said, I got a copy of it. I said, I would like to meet him. She said, what do you mean? And I said, I want to I wanna meet him. I want to get to know him. She said, we haven't done that before. I said, we're doing it now. 
She brought him to my office, a, a handsome young man that I think had never been in anyone's office that had authority or responsibility for anything. And he was nervous and he was angry and he was shy and he was looking around and I said, have a seat. And he said that, uh, I, I said, I got your letter and he said, they pick on me constantly. They pick on me. And I said, I want to know about you. And he said, what do you mean? I said, where were you born? He told me a town. And then he got in, the, and they're mean to me, and they pick on me, and they pick on me. And I said, wait, I, I want to know about you. He said, well, like what? I said, where did you grow up? He told me. I said, what was it like growing up? And he stopped still and sat quiet. And he, then he said, my dad beat my mom all the time. I said, what was that like? And he said, one night they were in the bedroom and I would hear him hit her and she would scream. I would hear him hit her and she would scream. And then once he hit her and there was silence, I said, what, what did you do? And he said, I didn't know what to do except kick the door in. I said, then what happened? He said, the next thing I knew, I woke up in the hospital. I said, how old were you? He said, 11. This is a perfect example of what we see all the time. Those who have lost their home, we tend to pe people tend to think something is wrong with them. We have learned and we run our business like something happened to someone. Every person that has lost their home, just losing their home is traumatic enough. But we work to peel back the onion to see what happened. Not what's wrong, but what happened, and we find it every time. Just recently, uh, we had our 4,000th person graduate from our transformation program, where they come and they work on what happened, what they need to do to recover from that, to get a place to live and get onto a better place. That this number 4,000 was a big deal for us, so we threw a little party, and I pulled her off to the side, and I said, tell me about yourself. I knew her a little bit, and she said, I came to Haven for Hope, and I, had, I was at the end of my rope. I had nothing. I had no hope about the day, much less the future. And she said, my issues are mental health challenges. And with eight months at Haven for Hope, I have learned what those challenges are. I've learned how to manage them. I've gotten medicated properly. I've gotten job training. I've gotten help getting a job. I have a job now. And with Haven for Hope's help, I have a place to live and I'm moving in today. People do want help. They deserve help. And they will work for it. We peel back the onion to find out what happened, what what happened, not what's wrong with this person, but what happened to them so that we can figure out a way to get them to a better place. I can tell you story after story of someone that tells of a tragedy in their life. And just, as I said, just losing their home is part of a tragedy. A few months ago, I got a, um, a box with thank you notes in it from women who were living at Haven for Hope in our mental health program, and they were, they were leaving and going to a better place. Uh, I got all these thank you notes, and I spread them out, and I brought one with me, which I think typifies what we experience with the 1,700 people that are living there. And by the way, of the 1,700, nearly 300 are children living with a parent or parents. This is one of the thank you notes. It says, thank you and God bless you. And it says, to Haven for Hope, thank you for the shelter, the three hot meals, the clothing, and especially the hope I've never had. Thank you.